So we want to say praise be the Lord. Amen. And we thank God for allowing us to come together on this Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Approximately seven weeks after Easter Amen. and uh, ten days after the ascension of Jesus Christ was the Holy Ghost poured out on uh, those that were in the temple uh, being on one accord on the, in the upper room. And the Holy Ghost came and changed the dynamic of the world, changed the dynamic of everyone to enter in into this great salvation. So we say praise ye the Lord. We certainly want to praise God for our first lady, Lady Tracy Quinn. Amen. Thank God for Brother Weeds, amen. Thank God for Minister Brady and Minister Quinn. Minister Quinn, won't you give us a scripture reading? I'm going to ask you to come up and pray in a minute. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And we thank God for our deacons, Deacon Fields, and yeah. Deacon Brady. We thank God for our media team being on, on post, amen. And we praise God for Brother Brady being back in our midst, amen. We thank God. We thank God for each and every one of you. Praise Him. Amen? Amen. How many of you know it's good to praise Him? Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's good to praise Him. It's good to give thanks unto the Lord. And I'll be working on some air conditioning, believe me, you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You don't, you don't know what you're missing until you get in it. Thank you, Lord. And we can't go through no months like this. This is just what? This is May, right? We still got May, June, July, August. You know, so we're going we to work on some things, all right? Thank you, Lord. We certainly praise God uh, for his help. God is a helper, isn't he? God said you have not because you ask not. Thank you, Lord. We're going to ask some philanthropic people to get us a donation and get us a man. Amen. Lord, we hot. <laughs> so we praise him. We praise him. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly want to remember, as I often say, men and women and children everywhere. You certainly, when you pray, you want to remember everybody. Amen? Everybody in all walks of life. No matter their station in life, you still want to remember them in prayer. You want to remember them as though you're praying for yourself. Amen? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I was instilling that in our Sunday school uh, class, my Sunday school class, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And if we follow that golden rule, that golden practice, life will be so much better. Amen? Life will be so much better. So we certainly want to pray for others as we would pray for ourselves, and we want to help others as we would want help for ourselves. If you have a mind and a focus on helping others, God has a mind and a focus on you. So we want to uh, pray, pray for unity, pray for strength, pray for the anointing, pray for uh, a, a, a rainbow word, amen. amen, a rainbow word, that there'll be a word in the house of the Lord on today. Uh, any other prayer requests? Pray for Sister Priscilla, amen, and pray for all those that are going through, all the bereaved families and loved ones, pray for our community. And let's pray for, the, for uh, those that are across the world. Thank you, Lord. Pray for Pentecost Sunday. Somebody to catch on fire and burn with the Holy Ghost. Uh, all right, well, we ask the church to stand. Thank you, Lord. Oh, uh, Miss Gwen, why don't you come up and pray? I'm about to pray, bro. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Jesus. Lord God, we praise your precious name. Lord God, we honor you. We give you glory, O Heavenly Father. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for giving us a mind to do that which is right. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your blood, we thank you, Lord God, oh, for your mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord God, for how you watched over our families, how you watched over our loved ones and our children. Oh, God, you are the God of our precepts, Lord God. You are the God of our needs, oh, Heavenly Father. You have blessed us tremendously, oh, Heavenly Father, and we give you glory and honor. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know each prayer request, Lord God. You know what we need, O oh Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask that you grant it, O oh Heavenly Father. Lord God, you grant it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask that you watch over the man of God. You give us a word from, from heaven, Lord God. You give us that ring of word, Lord God. Oh, Father, that you will bless our souls, Lord God. And Father, you Oh, 
strength, Father. That we can't go nowhere, Father. You become our strength. Hallelujah. We praise you for that, Father. A perfect exchange. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can give our weakness to you in exchange. You'll give us strength. Hallelujah. We thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. You are my strength.
because everything came out all in. Come on, give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we want to say that we have a four-hour ordeal um, and then inspection. Four of them, in fact, it was a four-and-a-half-hour ordeal. It seemed like the guy didn't want to leave. I hope he ain't listening to you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Four and a half hours. He said, all you need to do is send me pictures of this, this, and that, and then you can go ahead and open your daycare. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. I sent him pictures of this, that, and that, and, and we're on our way. Amen. So we certainly praise God, praise God for a new start, a new beginning. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And y'all look forward to more details to come. But we're looking for uh, supervisory aides and uh, some aides, amen, to help in our daycare. And most importantly, I can't forget that. We're looking for some children. <laughs> 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 you know, we're looking for them as well. So y'all press on the news. And then even on Thursday, we were able to close on uh, West 31st Street. I West 31st Street. <laughs>
of that particular giving. There's a certain amount of blessings that go along with tithing. Amen. God says that he will rebuke the devour, open up a window. Amen. And uh, uh, you don't have room enough to receive. He said that you rob him if you don't give your tithes and your offerings. So, so if you change your tithe giving to your offering giving, it, it does not uh, equate to those blessings that God has for you. So God also, he requires that you be a cheerful giver. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you give or you give, notice, you give sparingly, you'll reap how. So if you sow bountifully, you'll reap how. Bountifully. He wants you to give. He wants you to give and be cheerful. He wants you to give, not grudgingly. Amen. He doesn't want you to give out of necessity. I'm going to give this, Lord, so you can pay my, uh, my light bill, my gas bill. God doesn't work like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You want to give so there'll be meat in the house of God. Thank you, Lord. And you want to uh, put, a, put an attachment of a blessing on your giving. Give with a purpose. Give with a purpose in heart that you want God to turn uh, you 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen. All right. We want to ask the church to stand. Thank you, Lord. We thank God. I see the tapes in the house. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And he said, we see cookie in the house today. Thank you, Lord. Look at, look at, look at uh, Caleb, proud grandfather. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. You ain't got no prayer here, bro. <laughs>
certainly thank God for the liberal giving. I thank God for your obedience. I thank God for your continual service here at Kingdom Christian Ministries at the Apostolic Faith Church. And I realize that, you know, people have choices in their lives. And I thank God that you chose uh, to be here with us on this day. Thank you, Lord. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be with us. And we certainly praise God for that. And we thank God even for our online uh, following, our online ministry. We thank God for that. New things are birthed out of, out of bad situations. And out of this bad situation, uh, an online ministry was birthed. And uh, we had a record number of over uh, 1,300 views uh, on, of last week's service. So we thank God for that. We pray that you will uh, share our slips, our services on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. And that way uh, the word can get out. We are helping uh, to push the word out. And we certainly do thank God for all of those that we will give through our tithing uh, app and to support the ministry. God appreciates you when you support and do uh, the work of kingdom business. And you know, I often, uh, when I was uh, reading the word of God, and uh, oftentimes when I come across the scripture and I read about how David was commissioning uh, to build the temple, and as he was getting started to build the temple, you know, God didn't want him to build it, but he wanted his son to build it. But in that meantime, David got everything ready for the temple to be built. And what amazes me uh, about that particular thing was that God had put it on the people's heart to give. And man, and that's, that's an amazing thing. And then people gave, and then also people used their talents and their gifts to build that temple. And the beauty of it is, is that um, because they had so much reverence for the house of God, it was like they they, they put everything uh, together off site, and when they brought it to site, uh, they just they just put it together like a puzzle. And the Bible says that not a hammer was heard uh, as they were putting that building together. And uh, you know you got to use your imagination, but they they were they were so. Uh, in tune with God and so in reference with God that when they brought that thing together, they just put it together like a puzzle. Amen. Because they didn't want to uh, uh, offend God at all and, 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 and offend His holy name. They wanted to reference the house of God. So let us reference God's house. And if God lays it on your heart to be a servant in the house of the Lord, uh, do that. Amen. Amen. I didn't get too many amens, <laughs> but it's amen anyhow. Thank you, Lord. We, the Bible tells us that David said that he'd rather be a doorkeeper uh, in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. It's better for you to come to the house of the Lord uh, and work in God's house and have fellowship with God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. So as we get ready, uh, to go before the Lord. Uh, I want to ask you to stand one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and then after that, if you stand, you're only on. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not by command, it's by moving of the Holy Ghost. And I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number two. Acts chapter number two. And as we have already stated it's Pentecost Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. It's really uh, the birthday of the church. It's the birthday of the church. The church started on Pentecost Sunday. Amen. It's the birthday of the church. And as we get ready to go over our scriptures uh, for this day, pray for me that the Lord will give me. Uh, strength and clarity of thought and speech, and I pray that the word of the Lord will uh, be received by you with meekness, uh, 
to the saving of the soul. As we look at Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Read. And And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Can we read that verse again? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and, spake, and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to preach your anointed word. We ask you, Lord, that you anoint thy servant and anoint these thy great people. Grant us ears to hear the engrafted word of God to the saving of our souls. Father, we thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I just want to take uh, from a thought this morning that says that first verse, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. Now I want to just take a thought from that particular verse dealing with the game changer. The game changer. Can we say that together? The game change. The game change. And as we uh, try to understand Pentecost, we have to understand a little bit about Jewish history. And when we look at Pentecost now, it, it reflects upon a Christian uh, festival celebrating the descent of the Holy Ghost on the disciples of Jesus after his ascension. And it happened on the seventh week or the seventh Sunday after Easter. And the significance of that is because it happened on the seventh Sunday after Easter. Seven is the number of completion. And eight is the number of new beginnings. After the Holy Ghost, or after Pentecost, they were expected to have a new beginning. A new beginning. And when we understand a little bit about Jewish history, there were three particular celebrations or festival celebrations in their culture. Obviously, they had more, but there were three dominant celebrations that they had. And the first celebration that they had was Passover. They enjoyed the Passover celebration, and y'all know that Passover represented them coming out of Egypt. There was a lamb that was slain on the last night that they were there all together, and they were to eat that lamb with haste, and they had some bitter herbs, and which represented their tests and their trials and their sufferings. And, uh, and then they ate that and they shared a meal. And the following day, the death angel came and death passed over them. And after that, they were uh, able to leave Egypt headed toward the promised land. The second celebration they had uh, was the day of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. It means 50. And it was literally 50 days after uh, the Passover. And that was a celebration that celebrated new life, new beginnings. New life, new beginnings. And the last but not least, the, the last festival they had was uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, which represented an inflowing, a harvest, a harvest, an ingathering. And if you were to uh, look at what, what those festivals represent, they, 
he first started out with a Passover. He cannot, uh, then it started out with a, a, a Pentecost. And then it started with a harvest. Uh, in order to have a, a Pentecost, you need a Passover. You can't have a Passover, uh, a, a Pentecost without a Passover. You can't have a harvest without a Passover. The Passover represented everything. It represented everything. And the Passover uh, was, was, was a, play, a place where there was an offering up. Uh, of the Lord. The Lord gave his life and there was a celebration. And when we begin to uh, look at that particular history and to put it into context, we see that uh, Pentecost is a game changer. Pentecost is a game changer. Because when they uh, were celebrating the Passover and, and when Pentecost came, they were celebrating a new nation, a new nation. They were celebrating themselves as a people that were free from the enemy, and they were celebrating becoming a new nation unto God, where in God would be their God, and they would be the people of God. And that was a time of celebration. And what Pentecost means to us is that that, that we celebrate, we celebrate a new church. We celebrate becoming a part of a new church. It's a new beginning, a new church, a, a new church. When the Holy Ghost came and the Holy Ghost fell, there was something new. Jesus himself said, upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A game changer. A, a game changer. Uh, uh, just imagine all of your life, uh, the Israelites spent 400 years in bondage. And, and now it was time for them to come out of bondage and to serve the true and living God. A people that were not a nation. And now they're becoming a nation unto God. And, and when we look at Pentecost and what it means to us, uh, there could be no Pentecost without the resurrection. Uh, there had to be a death. There had to be a death. And then there had to be a resurrection. A resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and, and the Bible tells us that uh, before we came into this world, we were dead in our trespasses and sin. We were bound by the world and the world's uh, 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 accolades. And, and we gave our, our, our members unto sinful behaviors and sinful habits. But uh, somebody said, I went to a meeting one night and my, my heart just wasn't right and something got a hold of me. And, and, that, and when that something got a hold of me, it became a game changer. It, it changed the atmosphere. It, it changed your walk. It changed your, your lifestyle. God said that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Paul, he realized that when he received the Holy Ghost, that it was a game changer. He, he said, oh, wretched man that I am. He, he realized that he was a wretched individual. He, he realized that he had some issues. He, he realized that he had some problems. He had no cause problems, but he had a lot of pride. Uh, he had a lot of pride going on because he was an extremely educated man. And, and the word education, it puffs up. Hallelujah, but we've got to have education with a knowledge of God. Uh, when Paul received the knowledge of God, he said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me uh, from this body of sinful death? He said, When I wanted to do good, evil was always with me. Uh, there's a lot of us going through a lot of good. But we got a fact, we got, a, we got an issue, we got, we got some proclivities. And, my brother Bishop Noel Jones would say, we got some proclivities, we got some debts, we got some issues, we, we've got some problems. And, but, but if you come to Jesus and give your life to Jesus, it's like a game changer. It, it changes the atmosphere. Oh, Paul said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but, but after the spirit of the Jesus, uh, unless things that you used 
said like fire. Tell them, can't do nothing with 